Okay, so I want to take this time to talk about the impossibility of intellectual work in neoliberal regimes. And the im of impossibility is bracketed here to show that, or, or to make a visual representation of the fact that the possibility lies within the impossibility. Um, there is some hope for us yet as academics. Um, although I began this work back in the 90s when it finally occurred to me that we were caught up in something really dreadful and that I didn't understand what that was. I didn't even have a name for it. And I felt that our intellectual work was being turned into something that I didn't understand and that I didn't want and that I didn't want to participate in. And I even came to the verge of resigning um, from the work that I had always assumed would be my whole life's work because I simply didn't like what we were being turned into. Um, I decided that I needed to research what it was that was happening to us because to give up on something because you don't like it but you don't know what it is isn't, isn't a really smart way to go. So I, I decided to interview people around the world in, in Sweden, New Zealand, the US and Australia to try to get my head around globally what is it, what is this thing that's happening to us and realised that it was um, something that I could give a name to, neoliberalism, and that it was having a dreadful impact on intellectual work. So for this paper in particular, what I wanted to do was to look at discourse and the way that it works on us and also through us. In, in what ways, as embodied subjects, do we take up these new discourses, however absurd and however unpleasant they may be, they become our own in some ways and we perpetuate them through our own activities without even realising how much we've been caught in a foreign discourse that is anti-intellectual, that is anti-critique, that is anti the values that um, are embedded in academic work. So, so that was my task in this particular paper. Um, a pa the other papers have often explored um, one person's enmeshment in neoliberal discourse and how that impacts on them and on their work. But this one was looking at the discourse itself and trying to understand how that works. Um, and in particular, how it is that it, it undermines the, the critical work that um, we want to do as academics. So there were features of um, neoliberal discourse and how it works on us, the particular nature of it, um, the way in which it, it implements a system of piecemeal implementation so that we don't quite see what it is that is coming here or, or how to understand it as a whole. Um, so part of what the intellectual work that this paper is trying to do is to show as a whole how it's working on us, how it's um, uh, hyper-individualising us and making us compete against each other and putting risk onto the individual instead of being risk that something society manages and how it intensifies our vulnerability um, in order to make us um, more responsive to the ways in which the um, government and, and university in responding to the government wants to shape us and the kind of surveillance that we engage um, in on ourselves and on each other that um, enables these alien systems to be put in place and to shape our work and to shape our personal experiences. Um, one, of, one of the main features of um, neoliberal um, management and practice is to give us an illusion of autonomy that is actually quite false um, by giving us um, false choices and um, setting up systems where, you know, here are, here are ten terrible things you might do, but you only have to choose three of them. So um, you can implement really horrible things, um, having a great sense of autonomy because you've been able to choose which horrible things you might do. So I've also tried to sketch out in this paper what the implications were for us as people working in the sphere of education. And I'd just like to read to you one paragraph, because I think I say better in that paragraph what I can say spontaneously um, from towards the end of the, of the paper. 
I say we must give to our students a doubled gaze to enable them to become critically literate, to become citizens at once capable of, and adapting, of adapting and becoming appropriate within the contexts in which they find themselves, and as responsible citizens capable of critique, citizens who can understand the constitutive work that discourse does and who can work creatively, imaginatively, politically and with passion to break open the old where it is faulty and to envisage the new. Even more urgent is the task of giving them some personal tools of withstanding the worst effects of neoliberalism, seeing both the pleasure and the danger of being drawn into it, <clears throat> for understanding in the, way, the ways in which they're subjected by it. They need to be able to generate stable narratives of identity and to understand the way neo neoliberal discourses and practices will work against that stability. Um, so I think I'd like to end there with, the, with that statement of the implications um, of this paper for our work as educators. Thank you.